to the group. Uh, <laughs> this is about the body on Somerton Beach. And it's it's a, a doozy, if I do say so myself. So, uh, like she said, we're going back to the 40s in Australia. So, specifically, it was November 30th at 7 p.m. So, um, I already have a spelling error on this, so this is ideal. Um, on Somerton Beach uh, in South Australia. So, this jeweler and his wife are taking this nice little stroll down the beach you know, sun's probably setting at that point. I Well, actually, I don't know. I don't know what time of sun sets in Australia, but that's what I'm envisioning. So they're just strolling along and enjoying the November air. And they see this man who's so, like they, they always point out how well dressed he was. Um, he just looks super nice in this suit um, lying in the sand with his head propped up against a seawall. So he was about. 20 yards of distance away from them his legs were just out feet crossed over and as they're looking at him he like lifts his right arm up a little bit and then he drops it so they're looking at him thinking that he's kind of like drunk or something laying on the beach trying to smoke a cigarette which I mean I guess that's probably what I would have assumed at that point too especially if someone's nicer dressed and they're kind of like acting funky like that I feel like okay maybe he had a couple too many old fashions or something so 30 minutes later another couple actually sees the same man lying in the same position and they're looking at him kind of from above they could she could see again he's in the super nice suit um they said see yeah, smart shoes and polished to like just super nice like he's really put together which obviously is off for someone who's at the beach so at this point he was basically motionless with his left arm just out in the sand, and they figured he was asleep. Um, but what's – this is upsetting to me. Like, they just think he's asleep, but there's, like, mosquitoes surrounding him, and this joke, he's like, he must be dead to the world not to notice them. Oh, my – like, dude, use your brain. I mean, I guess that's probably, like, my brain wouldn't instantly go there, but if I saw someone alone – just completely passed out and not even noticing that, I'd be like, maybe we should call a paramedic. Like, I don't know. It's pretty upsetting. So ignore the, like, crippled children's home note. I didn't create this photo, but I wanted to show you. Uh, I feel like that's, like, probably not PC uh, (laughs) phrasing for the name of this building, but there's obviously this building here. There's the bench, 25 steps, and um, this is where the, the body was found. I'm assuming... The last couple was probably somewhere up here that when they saw them. So, you know, shocker, this this man is dead. So it wasn't until the next morning that he, they, he had been found that he was dead. Uh, I'm assuming it was sometime in between the 30 minutes of the first couple and the second couple that he actually died. So uh, the first guy, the first couple who had seen him raise his hand, uh, he had been out on a morning swim and then he found people out in that same area where the guy who he thought was drunk was the night before. So this time he saw the guy still slumped in the same position, feet crossed, but this time he was dead. So the interesting thing is the guy was found like he didn't have any marks of violence, no bruises, cuts, like it didn't look like anything yeah violent had happened. They found like a half smoked cigarette like lying on his collar, like it had just like fallen from his mouth. So it's very strange. So I'm just, I don't want to just blow through this. Um, okay. Yeah. I wish Australia wasn't so deadly to live in because it looks so pretty. And it's like you could sl- swim nearly year round. I know it's like November out for his morning swim. Very jealous. Um, except for the fact that he sadly saw this, this man. So I guess it's not that he's not that lucky. Um, but he probably felt pretty guilty afterwards too. Cause you know, in that moment, he didn't think anything was wrong. And then he saw the person the next day. It's like, oh, something was wrong. So uh, the body finally got to the hospital three hours later. So the I'm assuming the coroner, they just say Dr. Barkley Bennett, put the time of death as no earlier than 2 a.m. And he said the likely cause of death was heart failure and said that he suspected it was a poisoning. Now, for a long time... Well, I mean, I guess that still could be the cause of death. This is just, I shouldn't get ahead of myself. So, 
Starting off, right off the bat, boom, what clues did they have to work with? They basically had a pack of bubble gum. They had tickets from Adelaide to the beach. I can't remember how far apart they are, a few miles or whatever. Um, a hair comb, he had like two, I guess, and some matches. And cigarettes, which was kind of interesting because he had a specific brand of like cheap cigarettes as the box, but then it had seven cigarettes of like another more expansive like expensive brand stuffed inside so maybe he thought people wouldn't steal his fake cheap cigarettes oh why do i hear sound hold on is anthony hold on oh my god you guys i think i'm just getting weird because i'm talking about a scary story i swear i heard rustling i still hear rustling maybe it's a dog i thought i closed my door but i probably didn't i probably just didn't i'm fine no, no one's trying to murder me like the beach man, right? Please, someone console me. If someone murders me, at least you guys see it and it won't be like this mystery. So moving on, that's what they had. That's what the, the clues they had. So what was missing? <laughs> Jeez Louise, this is bad. Um, so they didn't have his wallet. They had no cash and he had no ID. All the tags were also ripped out of every piece of his clothing. So like... Yeah, like, no shirt tags, pant, like, there's just no identifiers, even of, like, the manufacturer of his clothes. So, what was interesting, though, they did find that one trouser pocket had been neatly repaired with some weird orange thread. And that's going to come back. It's not a huge clue, but it, it comes back later. So, I guess, remember orange thread. Now class uh we're looking at the autopsy here so they get into details but i think it's important so they saw that the men like the man's pupils were smaller than normal and unusual and that he had like a little bit of like spit i guess coming down his mouth and that they thought that he just wasn't able to to swallow it and uh oh shoot no there we go his spleen was like really large and firm and it was actually three times the normal size and the liver was just like full of blood and gross and his stomach um the pathologist found that like his lunch like the last meal he had which was a pasty and more blood so this really kind of led to the idea that he was poisoned right it kind of just solidified that that theory that they had um but the thing is there's nothing to show that there was poison in the food and like, like, so that they couldn't find any traces of actual poison. So now they're thinking that, okay, well, this leads us to believe maybe he was poisoned regardless of the food thing. Like, his weird behavior probably wasn't him being drunk. It was probably, like, uh, you know, he, he had been poisoned with something and it was taking this slow effect. Oh, my God. So... Okay, yeah, something else weird in there. I could, I, like, I'm doing very poorly with this. So his calf muscles were, like, really developed and tough. So, he, like, they figured out he was in his late 40s, but he seemed to be, like, an athlete. His But his feet were weird. Like, his toes were, like, wedge-shaped, and they thought, like, maybe he wore high heels or he's a ballet dancer. Like, someone was just off about his feet. And to me, the ballet, well, either one makes sense because when you're up in your toes like that, your calves, firm. And then your toes, eh bad so either one I guess is probably a viable option so really the theory at this point was the only practical solution was that it was like this rare poison okay so they had no traces of poison but like every all these signs are pointed like this this dude got poisoned right so they thought it was this rare poison that like it decomposed really quickly after they died and there was like no trace of it afterwards so okay decent theory so there are a couple poisons that can do this but they're so dangerous and deadly that the guy who came up with this theory like didn't want to say it out loud in court I'm assuming not to like like just didn't even want to utter it give anyone the idea so he instead passed a note to the coroner who had done the autopsy or whatever and like wrote down what his ideas were and it was either digitalis I think I swear I keep hearing things am I going insane I think it must be outside. Oh, my God. I'm, I think I am going insane. So, oh, my God. I hope Anthony comes home soon. <laughs> uh, really? I don't know nothing about digitalis because 
he's thinking that the actual one was the strophanthin. Strophanthin? I don't know how to pronounce any of these. But that's what he's thinking. So what that is is a rare, I guess, glycoside. Don't know what that is. But it's found in the seeds of some African plants. So it's, like, historically it's been known to be used in this, like, little Somali tribe to, like, poison their arrows, which to me is just, like, wild. I would love to go on a whole other tangent about that, dive down that rabbit hole, but we've got too much too much going on in this story to spend time doing any of that. There we go. So, who is this guy? Who, who are we looking at here? So, they took a full set of fingerprints, and they sent it out all through Australia, and then throughout like the whole English speaking world like they had no clues as to who this person was and they're just really just throwing out everything they can so no one I'm telling you no one could identify these fingerprints people from all over the nearby city Adelaide were like taken to the mortuary mortuary I can't talk uh in the hopes that they could give the corpse a name so they were hoping like hey you have a missing relative dude I you guys I'm going crazy I need Anthony to tell me if he's here or not. So, I think there's people in my house, you guys. Okay, so, the people, they brought people to the mortuary to, like, try and identify this person. So, what they had done was, I left this part out earlier, but they put, it's creepy. I can't put it in here because Twitch will yell at me. Um, they took a picture of the body's face, like, the face of the guy, and they put it, like, all over the newspapers hoping someone could see him and identify him. So, like, it doesn't actually, the picture itself doesn't look that creepy. It's not like you're looking at it like, oh, this is a dead guy. But, okay, it is Anthony. Jeez Louise. You, you've been, are you home? I'm streaming and you've been scaring me. I'm talking about murder and I hear rustles. It's just Anthony. I don't think I'm being murdered unless I upset him somehow, so. I mean, that could be also be a thing. So I guess I can't assume. So <laughs> that the one mystery is solved. That's good. That's great. So <laughs> again, they posted this guy's dead face in newspapers, hoping someone could identify him. Nobody could. They came to look at him in person. <laughs> yeah, thank you. This is bad. This is a bad, bad one today. So it's really actually, this is sad because they brought like distraught relatives from like people who were missing, hoping that like, it vaguely looked like their relative in the picture, um, but not one person, once they saw him in person, could recognize him. So that's that's pretty sad. Now, they're going all in, right? The search is now on to try and figure out any trace of who this person is. So by January 11th, police had investigated and dismissed like basically every single lead that they had had at that point. So they just kind of widened it all open. They're trying to find like luggage, just any personal items that they could maybe attach to who this person is. Like maybe this person came from out of state. They're not from here. So they're like having to check every hotel, every dry cleaner, like lost and found everywhere just for something that maybe could be traced back to this man that they found at the beach. And this is like months later, because remember, this happened on the body was found November 30th, and now it's January 11th. So by the 12th, detectives sent the main railway station, um, were sent to the main railway way station, and they're shown like this brown suitcase that it had been like lost there on November 30th, again, when this man was found. So the staff didn't remember anything about the owner, uh, and the stuff inside really didn't reveal anything, uh, but Orange Thread, looping back around, the case did contain a reel of Orange Thread that matched exactly what the guy's trousers had been repaired with, and it's like an odd shade of orange, so they really kind of tried to make that connection, but like labels were ripped off, there was like apparently a label that was attached to, like that had like like an, an initial and a name like K Needy, like some some strange name. And they tried to follow up on that, but there was like nobody with that name. So they actually kind of thought that maybe that that was like a trick, like someone left it on on purpose to try and trick them into thinking that this was a name. So yeah, this is the actual suitcase uh, that they had found. And you can see all the, the contents out there. It's just like, I guess, stencil kit. Not, not really much 
going there, but but it was at least something, right? Now, oh my god, there we go. So they're like, okay, let's call in some some guy. Let's take another look at the body. Maybe there's something we missed the first time around. So they're cycling back through to just see if there's anything that they missed. Now, okay, well look at that, Sarah. I guess I'm maybe I am a bit more of an expert in my. <laughs> Probably, I don't know, probably not. But I'm glad that you're finding new things here. So this, they, they had the one guy come back, Cleland, to take a look at the body again. So he actually found something different this time, which was a small pocket that was sewn into the waistband of his pants. So the other guys didn't find this somehow the first time. I guess it was like kind of hidden. Like some people thought it was like a secret thing, but other people are like nah it's just meant to hold like a watch or something so but inside that pocket they found this really tightly rolled tiny like ripped piece of paper which when they opened it up it had two words uh it was like this elaborate font and it said like to mom should I don't know how to pronounce it I should have looked it up beforehand but I didn't but you can see it there to mom should I'm gonna say that and that's the scrap paper there so yeah you can see the typeface is like really specific um and just this like little ripped sliver of paper. Now, what does that all mean? Does that, do we know what this is? So a police reporter actually recognized the phrase as being Persian. And he told police to look at this book of poetry, um, the like Rabbiat of Omar Khayyam. I, I'm, that's me guessing. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. So this was actually written originally in the 12th century. Um, and it become popular in Australia during the war years, um, it was like, it, you know, had a popular translation. So it had like a bunch of different editions, but like that unique script that they had, uh, like sent police on a wild goose chase, like libraries, publishers, bookshops, and none of, nobody could identify that type. Then nobody could find a match or anything like that. So what's interesting is what do those words translate to? That phrase specifically translates to, it has ended. Right? Right? Someone went through all this trouble. So they're kind of thinking maybe he did this himself, but it's just really not, to me, not looking like it. And I feel like as more we, like the more we go on, we'll see, it just doesn't seem right to me. And also, I feel like, Maybe if he was doing it himself, why would he take the time so much to hide his identity? I'm not sure. Aliens, right? Yes, it's 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 always got to. If there's no explanation, it's got to be the aliens. So, so now we're, now we're jumping to eight months after the investigation had even started. So, uh, finally, they're like digging through. They finally find something with that book right so on the 23rd a man of july a man walks into the detective the detective's office with a copy of the book and like this really bonkers story so i guess earlier in december so i guess just after the guy was found uh he had gone for a drive with his brother-in-law and in a car uh he kept parked like a few hundred cars or yards away from summerton beach and he when when he got back into his car, they found a copy of that book lying on the floor by the rear seats. Now, it didn't belong to either of them, but, I mean, nobody thought enough of it to, like, bring it up. Like, they just assumed it was the other person's, which I guess is fine. But I guess, like, if it's your car and you see, someone, so, see someone's book lying there, you'd be like, hey, is this yours? Don't forget it. Like, I don't know. I feel like I just wouldn't see a book and go, that's probably his. I'm just going to leave it nicely on the on the floor there. Like, that just seems like a weird assumption. But either way, they forgot about it. Um, it sat in the glove compartment, like, ever since then. So they had seen an article in the newspaper that had talked about the clue. And they went back and they kind of, like, took a closer look at the book. Like, oh, remember that weird book? Not yours, not yours. Okay. So they realized that the final page had been ripped out. Uh so they decided to go to the police because they thought, okay, well, maybe this is this is what they're looking for. So the detective took a closer look at the book, and almost at once he found a telephone number. Like, we are now cooking with gas. They think we are going somewhere with this, right? So 
he sees this telephone number like scribbled in the rear cover and he has to get out this magnifying glass and he finds the like impression of some other letters written in capital underneath. So they finally have this clue. Uh, turns out the phone number was like dead, like it was a dead end, but they found out that it had belonged to a young nurse who lived near the beach. So they didn't really identify any of their witnesses. Like they didn't identify the names of the first two uh, like the guys who turned in the book and they never identified her name, but she went by the nickname Justin, I guess. So she admitted a little bit hesitantly, I guess, because like she had a husband, like she lived with her husband, uh, that she had given a copy of that book to a man that she had known during the war. So she gave the detectives his name and his name was Alfred Boxall. So, OK, the cops are thinking that's it. That's our dude. This is the guy. That's the body case solved it's alfred it's our it's our boy alfred well the problem is alfred our buddy al he was still alive and he still had the copy that he was given so it had the nurse's inscription and all of that but it was still like completely intact the scrap paper hidden in the body like in the dead man's pants or whatever must have come from somewhere else but it's very interesting that her phone number was scribbled in there, right? And it's the same book that she had given to this other person, but it's not, yeah, it's very, like, confusing, right? So they interviewed her again, and she happened to recall that sometime in the year before, uh, she didn't know the date or whatever, she came home and her neighbor, like, her neighbors told her that some dude that they didn't know called and had been, like, asking for her, and... Pay attention to this point because this is to me where it really all comes together. Uh, when she's shown the like cast of the dead man's face, she like seemed they noted that she seemed completely like taken aback, like she was about to faint, like just in complete shock. So they said that she seemed to recognize the man, but she kept firmly denying she didn't know him, she didn't know him, you know, she did not know this man, which. To me, seems pretty sus. Right? Seems sus. Like, I don't think she, like, did anything malicious. But there's, to me, an obvious connection here, but one that she doesn't want to be known. I don't know, maybe maybe an ex-lover. Maybe it could be something more nefarious. Like, maybe he stalked her or something. But, yeah, sus. So, now here's this, there's this, like, other element here that gets super weird. Um... They're like looking at the book, like or the they're looking at like the piece of paper I think that he had had. And if you're looking at it under um, ultraviolet light, five lines of like just these mishmashed like letters could be seen. And the second were crossed out, so the first three were separated from the last two by a pair of straight lines with an X written over them. And it was like they thought it was some sort of code, but they couldn't crack the code here. I forgot. I have a picture. Yeah, so this is, this is like, what they found scribbled, essentially. Just, like, nonsense. But it, it does kind of look like it's some kind of code, right? Like, it's not just, like, written gibberish. Um, so they, like, sent this out to the public, and which is, like, always kind of a, a risky game. So a bunch of novice, like, code crackers tried to figure out what bim panet means you know like they got nowhere right nobody had any answers and the sad thing is like this is essentially where the mystery kind of came to an end they never figured out anything else um you know they couldn't crack the code they never identified who this dude was uh and then Justin died a few years ago, and she never explained why she seemed like she was going to faint when she was shown this guy's picture. Um, so she never, like, coughed up any info. It was just kind of like, that's that's it. And the coroner admitted afterwards, too, like, he never found a cause of death. Like, he never figured out, like, a manner of death. They never figure out, they couldn't even figure out how this guy died, but they had all these strange, strange clues. I, the thing that sits with me the most, I feel like he had to have been poisoned, right? I can't think of it. I mean, nothing else happened. Like they found no physical 
you know, scars or whatever's. So he, he to me, he had to have been poisoned. Okay, so jot that down. But would he have done it himself? Would someone be after him? Maybe, I mean, if she was that shocked, maybe he did. Maybe it was like an ex-lover and, you know, she had st- like, turned him away or had been scared of him. Like, I don't know, him reaching out to the neighbors is interesting. And so maybe he was like trying to leave like messages or something because like the connection with the book that they had. I don't know. I'm trying to figure this out. He's either a spy of some kind or it's like the people with lead masks where he believed in some kind of stuff. Yep. That's what, I'm wondering something like that. It's just too weird. And it's too weird to me that they can't like figure, they couldn't even figure out how he died. I mean, I guess we're thinking like back, this is the late 40s. It's not like they have like crazy technology and stuff now. But that's like, that's the story. Of the body on Somerton Beach. I want to know. Sarah's the only one who's been like diving into this. I want to know what everyone else like thinks. Of like what their theories are. Or. What. Like this woman to me. This woman had to. Right. She had to have some kind of connection. Because there's no. You don't. Well first of all. You don't react that way to someone you don't know. And then if you know them. If there wasn't something weird between you guys or there wasn't something like you would just say, yeah, I know them. Oh, oh, wait, I didn't know that, Sarah. I knew. Okay, so when I was doing this, I did see that they had specifically buried him in a way with like concrete so that he could be brought up at any time because they hadn't figured it out. But they were like needing to get this body in the ground. So. Yeah, I didn't know they were doing that. They're bringing it back. Oh, let me hear it. I'm going to get away from this. Go back to my note Canva. Actually, I should rate you high because I use you all the time. Um, I want to Google this. I want to try and search and see when they're doing. When are they exhuming the Summerton man? May 19th, 2021, an article came out from the BBC Oh, I think it must have happened. Let me see. Yeah, he was exhumed, I guess, in May. But I ha- I don't see anything more recent of, like, if they found anything. We should follow this, gang. 